Hello, welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Cork Express. I'm Martin Turner and uh, we're doing a series right the way through 2017, week by week, looking at key aspects of the world's most powerful desktop publishing software. Well, today I want to talk about gradients. Now, gradients have been in Quark Express for years, but since 2016, we've got uh, multicolor blends. Uh, I got to say, I resisted that for quite a long time. I didn't, I didn't want them. I think they're massively overused, especially on the internet. But they are now part of the vocabulary of modern life. The other thing about them was that in most software that offers them, it's really irritating. The, 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 the way of doing it is just very unintuitive. But the guys at Quark work hard, worked hard on this, and the solution they've got is really very elegant. So let's go to the screen and have a look at it. So the first thing that we'll notice is that the color blends are no longer in the colors palette. So it used to be, it's going here, that at the top of the color palette, you had uh, one, two, three, and then you had color blends. Um, but that's gone now uh, because they are now in window color blends. And you've got uh, basically four types of blend. You've got axial, you've got uh, radial, you've got rectangular, and you've got diamond. Now, I've got to say, I, I almost never, ever use the rectangular or diamond. They're in every application, but uh, you don't see them very often. And in fact, it's just the radial and the axial that are offering the new uh, multicolor blends. But the, the palette's a bit different from the old one, so let's look at it for a second. So essentially what you've got here is you've got the, um, let's click on that, uh, you've got the angle, uh, axial blend, yeah. Um, okay, what's going wrong here? Let me just delete that and start again. Uh, so I've got axial, and I can now move that uh, across here. And I can also, uh, let me just put that on mouse pose so you can see it. I can, I can move the center point across. That's, that's really very elegant uh, because that's hideously unintuitive in most applications. So, so very simply moving uh, the uh, slider here uh, and moving the slider here moves the start and finish point and this moves the center point. Um, now, let's look at the, uh, what's here itself. So, down here um, on the screen, you can see it. The first marker uh, is color none. That's 100%, 100%. Now, I could make that black 0%. Uh, and that gives a slightly different effect. I could also make it black, 100%, zero opacity, so fully transparent. Let's just look at that again. So that's opacity, um, take that back up. This is color, and this is with none. And those are quite important when you start to work actually with print, because the final output depends quite a lot on the print process. So you, you can set colors um, to overprint blend, which is, is the standard, but the way that those inks interact is quite important. And, and so if you're working on something and you're finding it, it's just giving the wrong result on your PDF output or on your print, then check that, that you're not trying to do something impossible with ink. And, and, and if you can't figure it out, just play and see, does it work better if I use a transparency rather than dropping the color, or if I use a gradient rather than none? Um, if you're doing genuine Pantone uh, spot process printings, where you've got a different plate with a different ink color, you can't actually really effectively blend, say, Pantone 4 at 5 with Pantone 172 because those inks are gonna be grading down, but they're not going to produce the result necessarily you expect, so be aware of that. Gradients are really for on-screen use, for, for, for uh, the internet, or with CMYK color, or with even better color, so for example, Pantone Gamut or Hexachrome or whatever you're using. The usual output of that is composite, so you haven't got to worry about it, but um, 
sometimes people, people get on the Facebook group and say, you know, I'm trying this with blends, uh, it's not working. And the answer is because they're actually trying to blend something which physically won't blend in the end. But let's go back to this. Now you can see also that I can, uh, as well as uh, moving this uh, by hand, I've, or I've added one now, I can also change the number. So if you've got a, a, a brand specification that says a particular way of doing it, you can put that in. And also I can change the angle here. Now, generally you'll want 45 degrees or something like it because uh, straight left to right or straight up and, or up, up and down looks forced, it looks overdone. Now, okay, you so, say, well, that, that's fine, but, but that's just two colors. I can just click here now and add another color. So let's add yellow. Um, and I'm gonna move that along here. Uh, and now I'm going to just make that yellow 0% transparency. And what's happened? That although the, the point at the yellow is blank, when it fades into black, it fades not from white to black, but from yellow to black. Um, now let's, let's turn that to a radial, and we'll look at that. Uh, in fact, if we, if we, oh, I've added one there, I didn't want to. Uh, Command Z, or Control Z. If we make that a full radial, which is a slightly different kind of radial, it's just a, a different look. I've got a passable imitation of the sun. Um, if you do that in print, people will stare at your page for hours. Um, okay, that's just a, a quick introduction. Let's look at some other things we can do with it. So, um, okay, over here we've got the top, my different types. Uh, as I say, axial, uh, we've got uh, radial, uh, and we've got uh, rectangular and diamond. Uh, they don't actually take multicolor blends and we don't really use them very much anyway. Let's look at this one. I've chromed this one. Um, so let's get rid of that box I created by accident. Um, how does this happen? Well, I've taken some text, I've converted the text to boxes. Uh, so um, uh, convert to box. Uh, and then I've created this color blend where I've put in a bit of uh, a bit of white, a bit of blue, um, uh, a bit of white again, and then more blue, and then blue, and then a band of red, and then white. And that's how chroming works. Um, it's a really 1970s effect, and I've, I've chosen Gill uh, Ultra Black as the font, because that's again a really 70s font, the old Letraset catalog. But um, what chrome reflects everything, and so you get, tend to get blue for sky, and then you tend to get a band of something, and, and then a lot of white. And that's quite a pleasing effect. And we can save that as an item of style. So if I go to item of styles, and I'm gonna do plus, and I'm gonna call this chromed. Uh, oh, I've already named that one, so I'll just call it chrome then in that case. Uh, and if I now take uh, another box, um, I can just chrome that, bang, there it goes. And you can apply that quickly to anything. And we're not just limited to chroming. Look at this one, I've done this, I made this one glossy. Um, and the way I've done that is by, uh, it's actually uh, editable text, but uh, overlaid over it, I've done, uh, you see that? I've done, I'm gonna turn F7 on so we can see everything. I've, I've done a blend which is uh, transparent, uh, white, transparent, transparent, white, transparent, and so on. And, and by overlaying that, uh, I create this glossy effect. I can apply that to anything. I can even apply it to the chrome, but it won't actually, you won't actually see anything. Um, so uh, let's just do that. Yeah, oh, well, actually, yeah, we, we've, we've got a little bit more life to that chrome. I mean, you, you, can, you can go too far with this, and you can waste time creating effects that don't have an effect, but never mind. Okay, what's happened here? Well, clearly we've got a radial blend, which is using um, uh, a transparent and a white, but uh, the key with this one is I've added a dropped shadow. So come down here, and you'll see, it's just a typical dropped shadow straight out of the box. Um, uh, we can also do other things. On this one, I've actually, um, come over here, uh, I've actually created a dropped shadow behind um, using the skew shadow. So let's just look at that drop shadow for a second. Um, uh, and you can see I've got a 40 degree uh, angle on that. Um, uh, and then I've done uh, a, a bit of a blend 
and different places and, and the result's quite three-dimensional, a little bit like an Apple uh, power adapter. Um, and we can also create uh, glare uh, by the same method we were doing with the, um, the glossy and overlay. But in this case, my glare uh, is done using a radial blend, uh, as you can see down here. Uh, and uh, again, so there's loads and loads of different effects you can produce with uh, gradient blends. The key to doing it, I've found, is to figure out what you want to do and then work out how to do it. If, if you just set off to play with blends, then um, you know you might get there, you might not. But if you, if you figure out what you want, if you see something in a photograph or on another page or, or, or just imagine it, say so actually, how do you do that? Almost anything you can imagine, which is to do with light effects, uh, can be done with a combination of color blends and shadowing. And uh, although you wouldn't necessarily think of Quark Express as, as your go-to application to create such things, combine that with the shape maker or the drawing tools, uh, the, the shadowing, which can also create, of course, blurring, um, and the color blends, and you've got quite a powerful package of tools for doing various things with. And of course, you can always export them uh, as export pages as EPS files to work in another application later on. Well, I hope that's been interesting. Uh, my name is Martin Turner. I'm the author of Desktop Publishing with Cork Express. You can get it from uh, Amazon or a bookstore. It will be here right the way through 2017. I hope to see you again. Thank you.